my name is Alyssa and you're joining us again for our Facebook Live today at the Aquarium of Niagara. Joined with me is Lance, uh, he's another aquarist here, and we're going to talk to you all about the confiscation methods for Asian arowanas and for freshwater turtles. Um, another thing I want to point out is Happy Earth Day, uh, it's our 50th, 50th year celebrating it. So Lance, let's talk about some arowanas. Uh, what is an arowana? Well, an arowana is a bony tongue fish. Okay, um, the two species that are mostly found um, that you come across would be the Asian arowana and, and the silver arowana. Um, the Asian arowana comes from Southeast Asia. It is actually an illegal fish. This is the one that we're going to be displaying. It's a beautiful fish. It's, um, we don't have a picture of it right now to show you, um, but believe me, when you come to the aquarium to see it, you're going to love it. Um, it's, we have a red Asian arowana. They come in four different color, basic colors um, in the wild. Okay, the red Asian marijuana is the one that's the most coveted um, because of its coloration. They call them red dragons, um, especially um, in China and Japan. They're especially um, popular there. Um, they are legal there. Unfortunately, they're not legal here, which brings me to how we obtained our Asian marijuana. Okay, it was confiscated at the border here. Fish and Wildlife contacted us, asked us if we had a place to store it at, store them at. We had a few of them come in. Okay, um, and so. What we did was we kept it and um, we raised it up. Um, they let us have it. Um, we can have it legally because we're a public exhibit aquarium. Okay, um, they are illegal to keep um, because they're endangered in the wild. Um, they are being bred on fish farms though, and this is where the problem comes from them being confiscated often because everywhere in the world except for um, the United States and Australia, as far as I know right now, um, it's legal to own them if you get them from a fish farm because they are actually um, tagged with a um, special um, under the skin um, like ID. Um, so they can be scanned and they're they can be identified where they came from, the individual fish. Okay, and um, so they are legal in other countries. Um, they are legal in Canada and that's why they were trying to bring them over here to sell them. They're a very expensive fish. Um, They've been sold for over $100,000 a piece in, in, in Japan and China for the super red Asian arowanas. Ours isn't a super red Asian arowana, but it's still a very valuable fish being a red Asian arowana. There are green arowanas, which are Asian arowanas, which are the most common uh, color. There are silver arowanas that shouldn't be confused with the South American silver arowana, which is legal to keep here. Um, and there are off colors like brown and some different colors that they're now developing over on the fish farms. Okay, so. What, we, what we're going to do with our Asian marijuana is down in the basement right now uh, while we prepare his tank for him. This is going to be um, the exhibit he's going to go in. As you can see by us standing here, it's a very large exhibit. It's a 3,000 gallon exhibit, okay? Um, this fish is almost three feet long, which is the normal size for an adult Asian marijuana. Um, this is another reason why you shouldn't have them at home because not too many people can keep these monster type fish anyway. Um, they will outgrow your, your home aquariums. Um, so um, it is, like I said, illegal. It can, there can be a fine of $10,000 and you can actually spend a year in jail for owning one. So it's a good idea not to own one. Okay. Now, now Lance, you said that Asian arowanas can legally be kept in certain places. Is there any special thing you have to do to own them? Any special permitting required? You do. That's a good question. You have to get a certificate of ownership from the fish farms that, that will sell them to you. Okay, um, and then, like I said, they are tagged under the skin with a chip for identification, and the number that's on the chip has to match the number of identification on your certificate. If it doesn't, then you're going to be in trouble. Okay, so, and that's something they do with other animals, too. Um, it's, just a, it's just a way of keeping fish being caught from the wild that shouldn't be taken out of the wild. Okay, um, now you can keep the, the silver arowanas from South America, a different genus, okay, but they, too, get three feet long. Okay, and so you would need an extremely large tank in order to keep them. Now, as you can see, the tank behind you has some rocky substrate. We have some driftwood lying on the bottom, a little bit of moss growing everywhere. Is this the exact setup we're going to have for the arowana when it comes upstairs to, to be uh, publicly viewed? Actually, no, it isn't. Um, we're going to be putting, like we have in the front here, we have some sand, some clay sand that's going to be on the bottom. They, um, we're also, we, may also, we may also be putting a stingray in here too and we want it to have something that it can bury into and that will be good for it to bury into and not have any scratches or anything going on like some gravel can do. Okay, we have some plastic plants, um, uh, artificial plants that we're going to be putting in that look alive. Um, this is just an example of them. These aren't the ones that we're going to be putting in there. Yeah, we're still uh, deciding we're on still the deciding. specifics. Maybe a few pieces of driftwood, some rock work, 
The thing with the airwana and the stingrays, you want to give them a lot of open swimming space on the bottom for the stingray and on the surface for the Asian airwana. One reason they do very well together is the stingray is on the bottom. The Asian airwana stays to the surface and swim around on the surface. Um, now the Asian airwana is a carnivore, okay, so it does eat fish exclusively as an adult. Um, when they're young, they will eat like uh, insects and then graduate to, um, to the fish as they get larger. Um, it's important again to remember that this is one of the fish that you don't want to keep. Even if it was legal, it's not a good idea to keep these large fish because most people do not have a tank that's 10 feet long at home. Um, you need an extremely huge tank in order to keep these fish for the duration of their lives. And if, even if you could um, take them somewhere, not too many other places would want them because there's not too many other facilities that have extra tanks that large to house extra animals. Okay, so we have a question coming in from Nancy. How do you get the water ready for the fish? How long does it take them to acclimate to the new water? And what temperature or salt requirements are we looking for for this Asian arowana? So say we tear down the tank, reset it, and put new water in. What are the next steps that we would go well, on? We want a softer water, um, not too acidic. Um, neutral is a good, um, a, a good parameter for them. Um, it's gonna be totally fresh water. There'll be no salt into the water for them. Um, temperature wise anywhere from like 74 degrees up to uh, you know 80 degrees is fine for them um, so they are a tropical fish you want to keep them in a warmer exhibit so the water does need to be heated if the surrounding area isn't warm enough to keep it in that temperature range okay um, so basically that's that's the water requirement for them they're not a hard species to keep they have a really good tolerance of pH range anywhere from the slight you know from acidic um, 6.5 or so all the way up to about 8 they can survive in very well. That's great. You want it to be gradual though so the, the question about how when you put them in there is you want to make sure that you acclimate them slowly from the water they're in to the water that they're going in. Um, if the parameters are the same you can put them right in but if they're not then you have to do a, a slow addition of the water that um, you have into the water they're going into until it equals up the water that they're going into. Okay, so what you're saying is there's a lot more to just the temperature of the water and the pH of the water. But there's other, um, there are other factors. They have to have a very well um, um, filtered system for them, biological, mechanical. Um, because of ammonia nitrite and nitrate, um, you need the biological filtration. Um, ammonia can, uh, is the most toxic of the three and it doesn't take long for ammonia to burn their gills and get into their bloodstream, keep them from getting the oxygen that they need. Um, so you just need a very well balanced exhibit that's biologically sound for them to keep the nitrites and the, and the waste to a minimum. Great. Okay. So once we get our Asian arowana on display, get the tank all set up, you guys will have to come in and see it. It's going to be beautiful, one of the best fish we have in this facility. So there's other things that can be confiscated, not just fish, but also reptiles, believe it or not. So we have some spotted turtles on display here for us. They're a native species to New York, and we just want to talk to you guys a little bit about those guys too. So we're going to make our way this way. Walking past just a few of our exhibits that you guys haven't seen in a while. These are our salmon, Lake Ontario. We've got some other invasive species over here, some redfish, got some gobies in there. And the gar tank that you just saw, which our arowana is going into, the gar are actually gonna come over to this tank. So this tank is in the process of cycling. So like Lance was saying, it takes a little bit for your animal to acclimate to its new tank. Uh, before that even happens, we need to make sure the bacteria that are in the tank itself are happy and healthy enough to support the fish that's gonna go in it. So that's where our gar will be. And then right next door, we have the spotted turtles. So these guys, we're hanging out right in the back today, but we have five males and one female spotted turtle. Like I said, this species is native to New York. Now there's a bunch of native species to New York. We have bog turtles, common musk turtles, common map turtles, going to some painted turtles, and then these guys too, even snapping turtles. Now believe it or not, it is not acceptable to harvest, take, or possess any of those species even though they are native to New York. And that's because of their, their population status in the environment right now. So unfortunately, turtles face a lot of predators, um, being humans, we can look at polluting their environments, um, going into degrading their habitats, so their habitats are lost throughout, um, even into taking them for the pet trade. So that's how we can get into talking about confiscating these guys. 
So I brought out this really cool turtle shell. Um, it's massive compared to the spotted behind us, but we actually received this shell um, from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, which is a governing um, organization that looks over, you know, all of the endangered or threatened animals throughout our, our region right now. So this belonged to a much larger turtle that was not allowed to be owned. And because we are a scientific or educational facility with specific permits, we were allowed to have this um, for educational purposes, just like right now. So believe it or not, you do need a permit to possess any species, um, reptiles, amphibians, or amphibians, I should say. If you are ever caught um, with an illegal species or a species that you are not legally able to have, there is a pretty hefty fine, about $500, and there's even more added on top of that with court surcharges. So you're looking at about a $1,000 fine just so you can have this little spotted turtle as a pet. So um, a big reason we like to exhibit them for you guys here is to show you that yes, they are native to our environment around New York and that's where we wanna keep them. We wanna keep their populations healthy and stable out in their natural environment so they can do what they wanna do and reproduce and make more turtles and keep building that generation after generation of genetics. Now, um, spotted turtles, bog turtles, musk turtles, all of those turtles usually unfortunately get exported out of the U.S. and taken to places, um, a lot of them actually Asia. So Asia is very well known for um, using reptiles as pets, food sources, even medicinal properties as well. Um, and out of about the 365 turtle species, 60% of them last I knew were exported for that, um, we'll call it the black market if, if you want to put it that way. Sorry, I was trying to answer a question from Ted. Give me just a split second. There we go, now you're back on the turtles. Okay, Ken, um, would like to know if those turtles get any bigger or are they full grown? That's a great question. So these spotted turtles are actually full grown right now. Spotted turtles won't get any bigger than about five inches for the top of their shell. So these guys, we actually acquired them in 2000, and so they are about 19 years old right now. So yes, they do look like babies, but they're uh, well on their way to becoming an adult. Now Catherine said, are there turtles at pet stores okay to keep as pets? So it's a little fishy. So pet stores have to have a specific permit to own those turtles and sell them. So as long as those pet stores have the appropriate documentation and you also have the appropriate documentation, then you are able to keep them. But you really, really, really have to do your research and the DEC really, really pushes you to research the animal you're interested in keeping and maybe even research um, any different species that that animal could look like that you also would want to keep to get your information in and, and you won't get caught up in the messy. So, if you guys have any other questions, please feel free to ask. We've given you a lot of information today. But um, other than that, I think we're going to call it a day. If you guys, like I said, have any questions, feel free to ask. Please check out our website. There's a crazy awesome activity scheduled for you guys, and you'll have a blast doing it. Please be sure to come in uh, at 2 o'clock tomorrow as well, and we're signing off. Have a nice day.